Hello and welcome to Spur Economics. In this video, we will discuss the logic behind robust standard errors, their calculation and how they are used as a solution to heteroscedasticity. Robust standard errors are also known as White's heteroscedasticity consistent standard errors. They are often used as a solution to the problem of heteroscedasticity. Before using transformations or methods such as the weighted least squares, it is generally advisable to check the results of the model using robust standard errors. It is important to note here that the model coefficients do not change when we apply robust standard errors. The difference is in the calculation of standard errors. That is, the standard errors, tests of significance and p-values will be different as compared to the usual OLS standard errors. This happens because robust standard errors incorporate non-constant variants of residuals to account for heteroscedasticity, meanwhile, OLS standard errors are based on constant variance assumption. This helps in establishing whether the problem of heteroscedasticity is seriously affecting the estimates. The logic here is that if heteroscedasticity is a serious problem, then the difference between OLS standard errors and the robust standard errors will be huge and we may end up changing the significance results of coefficients. For instance, significant coefficients under OLS standard errors may become insignificant when we use robust standard errors. Then, we know that heteroscedasticity is seriously affecting the results of the model. If the results of the tests of significance do not change between OLS and robust standard errors, we can usually proceed without worrying about heteroscedasticity affecting the model results. First, let us look at how the OLS standard errors are estimated. This is essential to understand how robust standard errors account for non-constant variants of residuals and how they are different from OLS standard errors. The formula shown here is used to estimate the variance of the coefficients beta. The standard errors of beta are obtained by taking the square root of this variance. Here, x is the matrix of independent variables and xt is its transpose. But, we are interested in the matrix theta in this formula. Theta matrix is obtained from the variance of residuals by multiplying sigma square by an identity matrix. OLS assumes constant variance of residuals, that is, homoscedasticity. This assumption is evident here in the theta matrix. You can observe that all the diagonal elements of the theta matrix are the same or constant. They are equal to the variance of residuals and assumed to be constant at some value sigma square. Hence, OLS standard errors are estimated based on the assumption of homoscedasticity or constant variance of residuals. We know that in a heteroscedastic model, the variance of residuals is not constant. That is why the OLS standard errors are not appropriate. To solve this problem, we have to somehow incorporate changing or non-constant variance of residuals when we estimate the standard errors. That is exactly what the robust standard errors do. To account for non-constant variance, we adjust the standard error formula shown earlier by changing the matrix theta. There are a few different ways we can adjust the matrix theta to accommodate non-constant variance of residuals. One of the most common methods is called the HC3 standard errors, which have been observed to perform well under heteroscedasticity. Under HC3, the theta matrix is constructed as shown here. In the formula, mu i are the residuals and h i are called the hat values. As we can see in the new theta matrix, each diagonal element will be different. The first element is based on the first residual mu1 square and h1, next element is based on mu2 square and h2, and so on. As a result, we will be able to incorporate the changing variance of residuals as the elements of theta matrix are based on each residual separately. The variance of the estimates as well as the standard errors are, therefore, based on changing variance of residuals. When variance is high, mu i square and hat values h i will be higher for those observations, therefore, those elements in the theta matrix will also have higher values. This is how we estimate the robust standard errors to incorporate heteroscedastic residuals. 
statistical software packages usually have easily available options to estimate the robust standard errors. If we detect evidence of heteroscedasticity, we can apply these robust standard errors and compare the results to the model with usual OLS standard errors. In case both the standard errors are similar and the statistical significance of the coefficient stays the same, we usually don't have to worry about heteroscedasticity. However, if the robust standard errors are drastically different from OLS standard errors, then the p-values and results of the tests of significance will change. Then, we know that heteroscedasticity is seriously affecting our model estimates, and we may have to resort to other methods such as transformations or weighted least squares. For more knowledge on heteroscedasticity, its detection and solutions, take a look at the links in the description. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content on economics and econometrics.